So this is the Nikon Z30, and Nikon are joining the world with releasing a vlogging content creator style camera. And that's absolutely what this camera feels like it's aimed at. You know, content creators, vloggers, people who are trying to learn photography, maybe coming from a smartphone, but they want a proper camera. This is ideal for all of those kinds of people. But let's talk about why. Because Nikon sent me this camera to check out. I've been playing around with it over the last little week or so. I'm out and about today. It's a beautiful summer's day. Hence why I'm in the forest, because there's just so much sun. It is unbelievable. So let's talk about what makes this camera interesting, what makes it good for you know content creation, for vlogging, all that kind of fun stuff. Let's go vlogging with it and let's talk about it. Okay, so I am using the stereo mics on the Z30 right now. I'm vlogging uh, a little underexposed, if I'm honest, because I want to make sure that the intensely bright sun that you can see just coming through these trees doesn't just completely blow out the photo. I'm using the kit lens set at 16 millimeter shooting at f5.6 and it looks pretty good on the screen. So two things I want to point out first of all, before we get into any spec while I'm using this as a vlogging system. First of all, I'm using the flip out screen to be able to see myself. The autofocus is working extremely well. It is drawing a little box around my head. When it loses my head, it draws a little box around my eye. So right now it's got a square around this eye. If it loses my eye for any reason, it's drawing a square around my face and it's just tracking me around the screen, which is working extremely well. And it's exactly what you would want from a camera like this. The second thing I wanna mention, along with the flip out screen, I've also got a tally light that I can see on the camera, which is fantastic because it just lets me know I'm recording. It also means if someone else was to see you, they would be able to see that light on the camera and it's kind of a universal sign that you are recording. So it's a nice touch to have that actually on the camera while you're filming, especially while you're vlogging or something like this. But if you had it on a tripod set up or anything like that, it's still a very useful thing to have. Okay, so I've come under the trees here because it is probably the brightest it could possibly be. I've seemed to have chosen one of the brightest days to film this, which means that shooting in the sun is just really, really difficult. But enough about that. Let's talk a little bit about the spec of this camera. Now, inside the camera, there's a 20.9 megapixel APS-C sensor. That means you can get some nice kind of detailed, decent quality photos. And the image quality is actually really quite nice. You know, there's a little bit of room there to crop, not loads, you know, not talking about high resolution, but then you wouldn't expect a super high resolution with a camera like this. So I think that's absolutely fine, but the colors look great. Everything just works really well. Autofocus, as I mentioned before, while we were talking about that while we were vlogging, actually works extremely well. Whether you're shooting yourself like this or anything else, the autofocus is very fast and very reliable. The subject tracking is great. Big fan, big fan. Nothing negative to say about the autofocus to be honest. Just works very well. The kind of highest praise I could give autofocus is that you don't really think about it. It just works and you don't have to worry about it. In terms of video spec, it's also pretty impressive. 4K up to 30 frames a second with no crop. That means there's no crop now. That's great and I think that's important, especially for a camera that you might use for vlogging. You know, it's an APS-C sensor, so a little bit uh, of a crop sensor there, but I'm not having any issue with that at all, especially now I'm vlogging. I'm using the 16 to 50 kit lens. I'm shooting at 16 mil and that's just working extremely well. Now, of course, I'm using the built-in stereo mics, as I mentioned a few times throughout the video, but there is a mic input as well. So you could add on a mic to the top if you would prefer to do that. The built-in stereo mics seem to be pretty decent, actually, which is nice. But if you want to use something else, that's probably like a shocker mic, let's say, that's probably going to give you better results realistically. A dedicated microphone is always better realistically. Otherwise, connection-wise, you're looking at USB-C, which you can use for powering. You can actually shoot while it's being powered as well, and obviously for charging that battery. And then, of course, you've got micro HDMI as well, which is a handy thing to have in a camera like this. There's no image stabilization in the camera, so while I'm vlogging like this, there's nothing kind of stabilizing that footage, so I'm having to rely on trying to be as steady as possible but also trying to just sort of uh, shoot wide, right? Which tends to kind of even things out a little bit. So this camera is a lot like the Nikon Z50, just without the EVF and with the flip out screen instead of the kind of flip down screen that the Z50 had. And I really like that design. Otherwise, it has kind of all the dials and the buttons that you would expect, a dedicated record button separate from the shutter. You've got the different dials that you would use to control the camera in manual mode. You know, the mode switch here. The buttons are pretty ergonomic. They're actually nice as well because you can feel as you press them, the tactile 
kind of nature of them is, is really good actually, which I like, because that's not always the case, right? They're a little bit raised, which is really good. And the camera itself is extremely comfortable for a camera of this size and weight. It is very small and very lightweight. I could literally put this in my pocket. And the camera body itself, I mean, look how ridiculously thin that is. But it has a nice deep grip, which with a kit lens like this one is perfect. It doesn't extend out past the lens, but it is very comfortable, more comfortable than you would probably expect from a camera like this. Now, we should probably talk about battery life as well. So on a full charge, you're looking at around about 75 minutes of video, which is not too bad. That's certainly enough to go out and shoot something, do a vlog, whatever it might be that you're doing. 75 minutes gives you a good amount of time. I have found that the battery does go down reasonably quick. Not the end of the world, but something to be aware of, maybe to take more than one battery out on a shoot. I probably would never go out with this camera with just the one battery, just because of how, you know, I wouldn't want to be caught short, let's put it that way. And uh, I would want to know for sure that I had a backup battery with this camera. Ease of use feels like it's at the heart of this camera, right? It took me about two, maybe three minutes to set up the camera from taking it out of the box. So literally from everything from image quality, size, JPEG raw, shooting video, you know, frames per second, all the different things like that, setting up everything I wanted to set up with the camera, it probably took me about two minutes. It might take someone a little bit longer who's not used to cameras like that all the time, but it really is extremely easy to use from the menus to the controls on the camera. Everything about it is very, very nice and straightforward. And that is key, I think, because, you know, this is targeted at maybe not professional photographers, but more of the kind of content creator crowd and people coming from phones. And I think that's a really nice thing to have it so straightforward and easy to use like that. The one negative I would probably pick out is that lack of image stabilization. It is something that I think is probably the only thing that feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. It'd be great to have that in there. But that said, I think I probably know why they didn't put it in there. It's very, very thin, the camera, right? It's very small, very light. And that feels like a very deliberate thing. And the image stabilization maybe would have just made that a little bit too weighty, a little bit too heavy. It might have increased the size, it might have increased the price as well, which would probably defeat the point of a camera like this. So that might be why, that might be part of why that's not in there. It feels a little bit like I'm missing it sometimes, but you know, it makes sense if that's what they're trying to do. So I can't judge it too heavily because I think, especially if you're shooting wide for vlogging, it's not the end of the world. Otherwise, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this, to be honest. Anyone looking to get into photography, to video, looking to do content creation, really gonna benefit from things like the stereo mics on here as well. It's just a great camera. It's a really handy camera. And to be honest, even someone who is already kind of into it, not just getting into it, someone like me, for example, I would actually benefit from a camera like this, you know, as maybe as a second camera, realistically, but it's a super handy thing to have because the difference between just taking this out to go and film myself compared to taking my whole setup with the microphone and the headphones and the camera and everything. I mean, right now I've got a big old Rode mic on top of the camera. Lovely, but if I could just take this out, be so easy to go out and film as opposed to taking my whole setup out. So yeah, definitely, definitely enjoyed my time with the Nikon Z30. Now, of course, you can check out all the spec, all the pricing, everything by following the links down in the description. Go and check all of that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well because there's new content all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.